Fathers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I wanna do now is making it last. Welcome to Making It Last podcast. I'm Noreen Daly. And this time around, it is how to make the distinction between acquaintances and friends to maintain healthy relationships. And to talk about this topic is my friend, Melissa Flinch, post-medical student orator. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, friend. It's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She, she, she is one of those individuals who I had the privilege of teaching and she has evolved mm-hmm. into being my friend. And I, I, I take that as a privilege. Mel, mm-hmm. how do we do this? So but let's just set a context. In your, in your mind, who is an acquaintance and then who is a friend? Mm. I've been battling with this for a while. In my mind, an acquaintance is more than someone you're acquainted with. It's someone you see. And your friend is someone who sees you. Ooh, I see what I did there. Ah! There we go. An acquaintance mm. is someone you see. And, you know, you can mm. interact with them and it's blessings and it's love. But your friend is someone who sees you for the good, for the bad, who had... Mm. Can I just pause on yes, that? Yes, yes. I, I, mm. Okay, spirit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> wow. Yes. I wish I heard that years mm-hmm. ago. That would have helped me out. I know. I know. But don't worry. You're helping You're helping somebody right now. Because for me, if, if it helps one person, my objective would have been met. Oh, bless the Lord. So, yes. Yes. Wow. Um, Mm -hmm. The notes that I had here when Mm -hmm. you told me um, the topic was quality over quantity time. Mm -hmm. So let's look at that first. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in our space who have control over majority of our time. Okay. Whether or not we want to realize it. And it's more than whether or not you're talking to them. It's the fact that they're in your mind. It's the fact that you're, you know, you see something and it reminds you of that that. person. Mm Mm-hmm. And we think right away that that means they're our friend because, you know, they spend a lot of time. There's a lot of quantity of time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what is the quality of that time that's being shared? It is, is it uplifting your spirit? Is it bringing good to you? Is it, how is it impacting you? If in my mind, if the quality is pa- subpar, mm-hmm. then that's an acquaintance who you spend too much time with. It's still an acquaintance. Um, what I want mm. is quality. Mm. I want the friends who I have in my life now call me and say, Mel, mm-hmm, where the sequel? All right, cool, me there you a gate. May I come check by you? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh, sure, why not? Mm-hmm. We can map out, you know, mm-hmm. 15 minutes because I need this more than I realize. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. And that conversation doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be, how are you dealing? How are you managing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's something that uplifts your spirit. And that's the second point. Mm. I heard it once. And that's a good way to, to avoid plagiarism by saying I heard it once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it says, um, it, was, it was tailored mainly to finding a mate. Okay. And it had said that we look for people who are good for our image instead of people who are good for our spirits. Yeah, my Instagram is full of good things. I, I, it's, good of, it's, okay. it's full of good things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people who are good for your spirit. And mm-hmm. so it's not a matter of whether or not you are of the same class. Mm-hmm. It is not a matter of whether or not we're at the same level. It's how you make me feel and how I make you feel. Mm. Is life easier to bear? Are there better perspectives that I wouldn't have had before? Do you widen my my perspective? Because I don't mm, need people mm. in my space who are just like me. I'm not going to grow. I, I want you to repeat that so that I can sink in for somebody. I don't need yes. people around me who are the same as me mm-hmm. because I need to grow. That's that's it. We we hear it all the time, you know. You need to be around persons who are sharper than you. You can if mm-hmm. you're the smartest person in your circle, you need to change your circle. circle. That's right. But actually, that's not completely true. It really isn't. Why do you say that? Because I'm learning now 
to understand the purpose of each person in my life. Mm. The fact that you are, the fact that you're not like me is good, but there are some things that are going to be similar all the time. So I have one person in my life who is now my sister, who when things go wrong, I video call her with my hair. And she's like, oh, oh Lord, when did that happen? How mm -hmm. do we fix it? What's going mm -hmm. on? But that doesn't mean I have that type of relationship with someone else. Mm -hmm. But that, okay. doesn't mean, make, that doesn't make that other relationship inferior. Mm -hmm. So it's understanding mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it role. is a beautiful mm -hmm. thing to have diversity mm -hmm. in roles as much as in individuals. Yeah. I, remember, I remember growing up, you would have some friends that you would basically call them your church friends because you mm -hmm. basically saw them once a week. Mm -hmm. Then you have those who school. Mm -hmm. But then as you got older, you know, there's the overlapping, mm -hmm. you know, so... I guess this would then apply because if I if I stuck to that philosophy as to have have people just for one space mm -hmm. that I wouldn't grow. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't grow because how then would be able to be in other contexts. Mm -hmm. So it means that out of the church context, then how then would I relate to mm -hmm. you if it is that you're not really, you know, mm -hmm. if we're not really that connected. Mm -hmm. So it, it's an interesting perspective. Yeah. Interesting perspective. Yeah. No, you, 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 you said when we started the conversation that you're still struggling so much. Why, why did you say that? <laughs> With even making this decision, why? Um, I am a person who, I connect with a lot of people. We know this. But I don't feel like a lot of people actually connect with me. Okay. And so there are times that my mom would have to remind me, Melissa, you are surrounded by love. Where I'd be like, I, do I really have close friends though, mom? And she's like, what? Yes, you do. <laughs> what are you talking about? Because for me, saying hi and bye is not enough at all for me, for maintaining my relationships. Mm -hmm. And so I had to understand that a lot of times too, I was judging people. I was judging my relationship with people based on what I expected it to be as opposed to what it should be or what it was. Mm. Like, yes, we connect well, and I wish we connected more. But if we connected more, we would not be friends yes. because we would very much be tired of one another. Yes. So, hey, all right, this is our monthly check-in, like legitimately saying that. This is our monthly check-in so you don't get tired of me. And as much as they think it's a joke, seriously, so you don't get tired of me, so that we look forward to it. It's it's tricky, and I'm figuring it out. And as as I am sure a lot of people listening. So yeah. you know, what then would you say to somebody that you know? I I I I hear you, and I'm trying to internalize what you're saying. But Anna, I'm gonna use this word I use in a in a previous part. Practicalize it. <laughs> so I have some people in my life where. I am not sure. Mm -hmm. What then would you say to somebody to say, yes, you know, these are some of the things you can look for to make sure that you, you make that clear distinction. Because the reality is this, Mel. Your expectations differ based on where you categorize people. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody listening might say, but that sounds harsh. But then if you don't categorize people, you set yourself up mm -hmm. for some level of hurt. So mm -hmm. what then would you say to somebody to say, you know, Maybe you might be somebody who people gravitate because I'm also guilty of that, I mm -hmm. believe. And I'm not saying it to sound conceited, mm -hmm. but I believe that God has given me the ability to have young people gravitate towards me and they will mm -hmm. share things with me. And I think sometimes they really think that because they share, it means that we've connected on such a level that mm -hmm. we're friends. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we're friends because you've shared your life with me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so when, you know, how then can we then say to people, you know, what are some of the things they can to make that distinction clear? Oh, wow. I think first off, we have to determine in ourselves what this distinction is. You okay. Know? We have to first figure out our own criteria. Mm. So that's the first thing. Okay. Um. Secondly, I found it to be quite progressive to have conversations to say who am i to you yeah you know i just i 
it's it's a weird convo, but like for real, who am I to you? Like, what do I mean to you? How would you rate me on a scale of uh, enemy? Kind of can't deal with you sometimes. Mm-hmm. To all the way up to friend or best friend or sister. Here, here was the challenge though with mm-hmm. that conversation, Mel, is that some of us will ask that sort of a conversation but then we're not prepared for what we might hear yeah. so we yeah so yeah. continue but yeah, i just want to go that point. word of con- ca- caution yeah because it's all well and good to say yes have the conversation mm-hmm. but if it is mm-hmm. that i'm having that conversation and i feel that okay yes i am so connected to mel that mel will say we are i'm part of her circle mm-hmm. but then mel says no mm-hmm. You are my friend, but you're not part of my inner circle. Mm-hmm. That then could create other problems. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. life, life hasn't taught me how to deal with that one yet. Okay, fair enough. Um, fair enough. One mm-hmm. thing that I have found to be quite beneficial, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> side note, I love chronics. Absolutely love chronics. Yet, interestingly, when I saw a sweatshirt that they have, I took a good month To try and decide whether or not I wanted to buy it. Okay. Yet at the same time, there is this series on YouTube that I've loved to watch, I think over the past two years, called Mm -hmm. The And. And it's two persons Mm -hmm. separated by a table, about a foot of a distance between them. And they're legitimately taking up cards. And person one asks person two what's on the card. And person two answers. Mm -hmm. Every question must be asked. But not every question must be answered. Mm. And so to get the quote unquote right to not Mm -hmm. answer, you have to look the person in the eye for 10 seconds and then say pass. And the moment I realized they came out with a card deck, immediate buy. Immediate buy. And I carried it back home and I said, mom, we need to play this. Because they have one for friends, Mm -hmm. one for family, and one Mm -hmm. for couples. Mm -hmm. And... As much as I knew that my mom and I were close, Mm -hmm. the questions that were in those decks included, what's something you're hesitant to tell me? How do you really feel about how I handle money? What's a pain in me that you would want to fix? How do you feel about... And those conversations have been some of the most edifying conversations I I have ever had. Where I say to my close friends, hey, we need to play this game. What is the most ridiculous thing I've ever done? I showed my best, one of my best friends the card mm-hmm. and he just started laughing and I immediately got worried. And his answer, as much as I thought it was going to be something goofy that I did, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. his answer was that you didn't know your value and you were in said relationship for that long and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, drip up. Okay, mm-hmm. mercy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need to take a walk for that. And just having those deeper conversations. So just a side note, along with figuring out the category, yes. also realize, as we had said in a previous podcast, I'm not mm-hmm. sure how long ago that podcast was, mm-hmm. but to make deliberate attempts to figure out, you know, the levels of relationships That's that right. we want, that we have. That's right. And Steps include those card decks to say, you know, let's figure out this relationship so that the two of us know what we're bringing to the table and know that we're appreciated. Yeah, yeah. As we're wrapping up, though, mm-hmm. if if for all of what was said, because you've said a lot, somebody's still saying, eh, eh sure. Mm-hmm. Your response to that level of cynicism or skepticism would be what? The first line that we had at the beginning of the podcast. An acquaintance is someone who sees you. Sorry, an acquaintance is someone you see and a friend is someone who sees you. So no matter how much you see what I say as, oh, whatever, Mm -hmm. that's one line that can govern your life, really. Who sees me for me, even when I can't see myself? And who says, hey, you are more than this and picks you off up and brushes you off and says, come walk the path, walk in your purpose. Those are the people who I call my friends. Yeah. Same here. Mm. Hence, that's why I said Melissa has evolved oh into gosh. a friend. That's the Lord. Thank you so much for this conversation. We spoke about how to make the distinction between acquaintances and friends so as to maintain healthy relationships. 
This is the Making It Last podcast. I'm your host, Noreen Daly. Until next time, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I want to do now is making it last.